namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddhang Thammang Sanghang Namasami So another week goes past Saturday night by Gary and uh, the uh, uh, world is still a mess and uh, and there and it's still the uh, in you know the only really skillful response is to be is to be practicing dhamma you know so I mean even if the world were perfect and and uh, everything were wonderful it's still um, the um, you know really the 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 only thing to be doing is uh, practicing the Dhamma it's like in the um, it's the, the Anatalakana Sutta that we uh, chanted or recited, um, you, know, so, you, know, you know, just looking at all phenomena, all bases of experience, and, so, you know, and it's impermanent, painful, not self. Uh, that which is impermanent, painful, subject to change. Is that appropriate to be saying, this is mine, this, this is, I am this, this is myself? No. And of course, so you can't just uh, wave a magic wand and not feel like that or think like that. But it's, uh, it requires practicing Dhamma and, and uh, you know, ongoing practice, consistent practice, steady practice. Um, and and when I say practice, it's just living the Dhamma, uh, really, really living it. And uh, I think something that comes to mind is is because uh, um, the, the, these teachings aren't so say distant, so far away, so. Uh, you know, absolutely ethereal and refined that it's beyond any of us. And see, and the Buddha talked about um, three kinds of practice that are are uh, are always um, correct, always beneficial. It's called apanika dhammas, and um, you know, not uh, say, yeah, not incorrect, not not at all the wrong way to 
practice or to live. And the uh, very first one is is the uh, Indriya Sangra. And uh, usually it's translate a restraint, a restraint of the senses. But uh, I think, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you say, your composure of the senses, composing our... Um, our attention so that we re- recognize clearly what are we experiencing. Um, I mean, we do have functional senses so that we're always going to be experiencing sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, uh, mental formation, so having thoughts, emotions, Uh, various kind of mental responses, but to be attending to composure, settling, um, just not being being uh, um, yeah, entangled or caught up or or re- re- reactive. Um, with 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 this experience of the senses, um, the uh, second quality that the, the Buddha pointed to as a yeah, it's never never wrong to practice the uh, um, bojane matanyuta the the uh, um, knowing moderation in eating. It's just a uh, a uh, um, and of course that that starts to to uh, if one pays attention to the that that quality of moderation. I mean, there's a certain composure that's there as well. Um, and it's not clamping down, or, or, or uh, uh, but it's it's just you know what what is it that actually um, feels comfortable, gives one energy, but it keep has a sense of there's a sense of well-being, a kind of uh, not experiencing a sense of. Um, you know, heaviness and dullness because of of, of uh, what we've eaten, what we've consumed, because um, it does start to extend. And, and this is in other places the Buddha talks of that. that uh, when we understand the the uh, uh, relationship to the senses, and the, then we uh, we understand food. Uh, or sustenance, and then we start to understand the, our relationship to the sense world around us. And uh, so that sense of moderation, and one doesn't have to be too um, extreme, too um, uh, hard on oneself, but having that quality of knowing what's enough, uh, and just you know, that sense of you knowing what's enough, because that's a—I mean, that's an incredible skill. Now that you start to apply to everything, uh, just knowing what's enough, knowing how to be content with what is enough for well-being. Um, so I mean, be, it begins with food, and and that's a tangible thing to work with. Um, but it it starts to you start to see uh, it reflected in all the other things that we uh, engage with in the world. Uh, 
And the last quality that uh, the Buddha um, classifies as a apanika dhamma, a quality of that's never wrong, never wrong, never. It's not going to be problematic. Chakarayana uh, yoga is to the a devotion to wakefulness um, and that sense of you know, yeah commitment to being alert to be present to be to be awake to waking up uh, and uh, you know not dulling oneself not put uh, I mean literally of course it's it's talking about just not annihilating oneself in sleep all the time but uh but it's a uh, you start to extend it and see the application and it's that that uh, yeah that commitment to to uh, to waking up being awake uh wakefulness being present attending carefully uh, with the world around one and of course the inner world um, what waking up to what what one's mind is doing what's my what kind of mood what kind of thought what kind of feeling what kind of uh, reaction is taking place what kind of of uh, of uh, um, uh, of reaction are we having uh, getting caught up in and and that uh, um, you know, gives one a, a sense of establishing a solid foundation of of of, you know, of composure of moderation of of alertness and presence and and that was good. That, that's a, a a quality that will always serve one well in, uh, in dealing with the world. And again, whether it's you know, conditions are absolutely perfect and and you're getting what you want, and, and, uh, and you know one can deal with that skillfully, uh, or one is in a situation where yeah, it's really don't want it to be like this, um, don't like it, um, shouldn't be this way, uh, one can still uh, respond to it in, in, a, in a way that's grounded in Dhamma, based in, 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 in Dhamma. And, and that, uh, you know, it's just, and being able to recognize when when the uh, uh, having that quality of clarity and composure that that sees well, you know what is actually beneficial, what's useful, what's going to uh, be for say m- my own welfare and happiness and the welfare and happiness of others. Um, how do I look after myself and and, and others around me? There's a, uh, I recently heard a, uh, <coughs> a story recounted of uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's giving an, an, an interview for media of some sort, radio, television, I'm not sure. Uh, but the uh, and it was in, of course it's in a Western country and uh, I can't remember where. But the uh, the interviewer is is uh, is a bit kind of incredulous at the uh, uh, His Holiness is is uh, commitment to compassion and kindness and. Uh, uh, and uh, and and he's kind of going this way and that way, and, uh, and you know, find it is, you know, isn't, you know, don't you 
feel you know, anger at how the Chinese have uh, treated you, what they've done to you, what they've done to your country, what they've done to your culture. And uh, His Holiness's response was just, uh, you know, I, I can't, uh, I can't afford to to uh, to have anger. Anger, I, I would lose my intelligence. And it's just that simple. Uh, that that if one gets caught up in 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 any kind of negativity, um, and, uh, whether it's just uh, negativity, criticism, um, aversion, ill will, irritation. Um, we we're we're trading our innate intelligence, composure, um, balance, uh, clarity, uh, awakening, for you know something that's just really agitating and and decreases our our ability to to to. Uh, understand the world around us and to live skillfully. So we, we lose our intelligence. No, it's kind of like what Ajahn Chah says, you know, you're, you're, you lose your mindfulness for, for one second and you've, you know, you've lost your, um, you've lost your mind for, for for one second, you lose it for a minute. You, you lose your mind for a minute. You you you're really deranged. Um, so and of course that the the goal of Buddhism is definitely the opposite of derangement. And it's really learning how to be uh, really solid, clear, and peaceful. Um, and it's choices that we make moment to moment. Uh, learning how to, learning how to make those choices. So learning how to, learning how to to uh, yeah direct our attention to, to the things that that are um, yeah, worthy of worthy of faith, worthy of confidence. Uh, uh, Worthy of devotion. Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. Those that that's your the kind of the the uh, uh, the glue. And for from a Buddhist perspective, that's the that's the glue uh, that holds our our uh, um, yeah, as a focus of attention that that keeps that that that. that Compass point that that uh, that direction that foundation uh, that's the that's the basis and it's of course a basis for well being. Ajahn Jayasaro tells uh, 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 quite a well. I'm completely biased, but I thought it was a beautiful story of of uh, a uh, uh, an exchange that he had with Ajahn Chah. One time, he was uh, uh, attending. Um, uh, I was at Upatan uh, for Ajahn Chah, looking after Ajahn Chah uh, when he was a young monk, and uh, and Lopa Chah. Lopa Chah had. Um, and he thought our names were all, all, always a bit funny, and and he had a sense of humor. So uh, he would, uh, um, um, he, and easier for him to remember us to just having having uh, uh, names that he could, could remember. So he, Ajahn Jayasaro's lay name, and when he first arrived at at. Uh, in Ubon at Wat Papong, um, um, uh, uh, 
was uh, Sean is his is his late name. So then, um, Bajan Ch- uh, Cha would call him Chon, uh, which means spoon. So, <laughs> so he could remember those spoons. So he said, so and he was, said Chon, and just said to a mother of the blood, so Chon, you know, if you really knew how to bow, you'd have tears in your eyes every single time you bowed. And if you, you know, if you really knew what we, you were doing, or really knew the meaning of um, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, if you, if you could bring that to mind every time you bowed, you, you'd have tears in your eyes. It's that sense of kind of like tears of gratitude, tears of joy, tears of, of uh, just uh, appreciation and good fortune. And so it was really a, a beautiful um, uh, uh, kind of pointing um, you know, kind of the, the, the power of Buddha Dhamma and Sangha to so to bringing bringing that to mind because that's what, you know say we have a we have a limited time uh, within this human form um, you know at, at best we might get a hundred years out of this. And that's extremely rare. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, and at worst, we, you know, who knows what, what could happen within the next moments. Um, you know, it's, anything can happen. There's no guarantees. So. Because that's one of the... Uh, Ajahn Chah used to say, yeah, let's take this human form, this human life, this human body. But there's, no, there's, we don't, there's no warranties on this. We don't get a, there's no guarantee at all. Um, but uh, having that uh, and knowing that, and then you know, one wants to turn one's attention to what's really fruitful, what's beneficial, what's, what's kind of what has some foremost benefit as as a uh, beautiful discourse in the Iti Vuttaka it was very short, very simple but where uh, the Buddha the Buddha talks of what is you know Say what is a supreme uh, uh, or what is foremost and he said you know of all Beings, uh, you know, whether they're human or non-human, uh, two-footed, four-footed, and uh, you know, whatever realm they live in, what they, uh, they, the being who is most supreme is is, well, is the Tathagata or is the Buddha, and you know, if one has faith. In the uh, in the Buddha in the Tathagata, then one has faith in what is supreme. And if one has faith in that which is supreme, the result that arises from that is supreme. It's a, you, one can expect to uh, have a have a yeah, a supreme result from having confidence in that which is that which is supreme. Um, um, similarly, the Buddha talks of the in terms of say, dhammas or uh, conditions um, that are uh, say, he talks of what are, say, conditions or dhammas that are Supreme of of, the, of those that are 
either um, conditioned or unconditioned. Um, the say the condition or the state that is supreme is dispassion, uh, and uh, and if one has faith in that which is supreme, say faith in dispassion, confidence in uh, in in dispassion, then you know one. Um, one reaps that which is supreme, and that's in the uh, the uh, uh, Anatta Lakana Sutta uh, um, that we chanted this evening. When that was uh, uh, it's the, that, that, that that of course the reflections on the uh, on the five khandas and on the Anicca Dukkha Anatta, and and then uh, particular, of course, of particularly Anatta, and there is a, a there's a, a disenchantment, and then because of disenchantment, the passions fade away, and that's and that is, say, we we lack a dispassion, and if the passions fade away, and then with the fading of passion or with Viraka, dispa- the heart is liberated, um, and with liberation, with liberation there comes the knowledge. It's just liberated, and so that that sense of the this is the the uh, uh, quality of dispassion, the, the condition, and because uh, it leads to it leads to the deathless. It's it epitomizes, it's the flavor uh, of the deathless. Uh, this is supreme, I'm saying uh, foremost. And, this, that's, and that having confidence in that, so rather than yeah, spending our time finding things to stir up, the mind, agitate the mind, uh, create the passions of irritation, aversion, longing, fear, anxiety. We have the option of turning to to this, this sense of, of cooling, of letting that it fade away. Uh, and that is that that opens the space for 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 this quality of of the, the heart being liberated uh, so that then the Buddha also speaks in terms of dhammas or conditions of of all conditioned dhammas of all conditioned uh, Fabricated conditions. Um, the eightfold path is the is the is the foremost is supreme. This yeah, the eight, noble eightfold path leading to the ending of suffering. The path of practice, path of training, uh, embodying the seal of samadhi banya. Um, and say uh, that is what is, yeah, it's foremost, supreme, and uh, make the commitment to practice, commitment to training, uh, commitment to living a life of, uh, say, a uh, balance, because that's the noble eightfold path. Is is that, is that sense of uh, it is noble because of uh, it. It is. It's a uh, it, it, it is a way of embodying this middle way, this balance that al- allows the, 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 the heart to, to, to free itself. And in, the, the, uh, in terms of 
communities in terms of groups. And the, it's this, say, the sangha of the... And, it's, and it, of course, in terms of sangha, it's, it's always the, the, you know, the noble sangha in ter- terms of those who have entered the, at least entered the, the, the uh, uh, stream entry, those who are, mm, the, uh, like when we do the chant, four pairs, eight kinds of noble beings, and everybody, uh, so many uh, times people, you know, so what's this, you do the chanting, over and over again. What's these four pairs, eight kinds of noble beings? So it's just the, the, those who have uh, are practicing uh, those, um, uh, says Magga and Pala, the, that who have entered the path of practice and, uh, uh, and those who have experienced the fruits of the practice. So stream enterers, once returner, non returner, arahant. And so that uh, um, uh, sangha, that community, that those groups, uh, it's not about ordination. It's not about. Uh, it's about experiencing the fruits of the practice, and that's accessible to to everyone. Um, Living this, uh, yeah, this uh, embodying the, the the training, commitment to commitment to integrity, commitment to to settling the heart, and commitment to discernment, commitment to understanding, and so that recognizing that this is yeah that is that's this, uh, the, these bases of confidence basis of faith and so and and, and um, having that when it's very uplifting and energizing to to have confidence in something um, you know, it's so easy to spend one's life doubting or skeptical or uh, or uh, unsure uncertain so that that uh, and, and of course it isn't about belief uh, and you, you can't think yourself into this or or trying to convince yourself uh, into believing it's that that quality, that sense of confidence, sense of, of sattha, um, and uh, yeah, maybe devotion, um, yeah, something that is 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 uh, uh, not so familiar to us with our our uh, um, background in. in yeah, Western philosophy, Western religion, um, but um, because that, that 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 tends to be um, yeah emphasis on I'm saying on belief, and when you say faith, it, you know, it's, it's having um, you know, kind of a believing. But for 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 the Buddha, um, that having. Sadha is more of that sense of confidence and a deep appreciation, a deep sense of understanding that this is really, this is what works, this is what helps to free the heart, this is what provides a, a, a real clear direction for the human condition. And, and that's exactly why, uh, you know, Ajahn Chah say that, yeah, if you, if you really, if you 
really understood that. Um, yeah, every time you bowed, you, tears would come to your eyes. And it's really a, a beautiful reflection or recollection. Um, and and that, that sense of, of having um, uh, a clarity, and particularly uh, during these times when, when, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of confusion, a lot of angst, um, a lot of mm, conflicting ideas, and and uh, and where does that take the heart? And what does one want? Where does one want to put one's attention? Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my chips on the Buddha and Sangha. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a better bet. So offer that for reflection this evening.